no! This head belonged to my co-pilot, Robot. He was the most loyal companion in the galaxy. Dick. Malfunction. Dick. Malfunction. These Gravorians will pay dearly for this, my friend. Now, what's a space adventure film without a trusty robot sidekick, huh? Am I right? In the original draft, we had Dick and Scarlet team up with an alien from the planet's surface. You know the type, pointy ears, wise and emotionless. Uh, but then we came to our senses and realized that a giant tin can robot's way cooler. <laughs> Besides, everybody was doing the alien thing back then. You know me, I'd rather be a trailblazer. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Why on earth does this crazy film have title cards on screen when people are talking? You're thinking that, aren't you? I know you are. I would be too. Well, we had thought about making it a silent film at one point, so we shot a lot of scenes up close like this with the dialogue written out for the audience to read. Well, when we swapped over to making a talkie, well, we just decided to keep on going rather than reshooting all those scenes.
Picking Science community also complained about these Terra whatever's breathing fire. Like there's fossil evidence of dinosaurs not ever shooting fireballs. It's not like I gave them neck frills or had them spit poison or anything ridiculous like that. As luck would have it, the next lot to ours was filming some horror movie set in Transylvania. So we signed a soft contract with them to use their set after they wrapped for the day. And by that, I mean we kind of snuck in and filmed it real quick when no one was looking. <laughs> I had my assistant Phyllis keep a lookout for the security guard. <laughs> Nothing like an adrenaline boost to get our hero to really start wailing on those monsters. We were unsure how to represent a surge of adrenaline at first, but I think we nailed it. Yep, definitely nailed it. Hey, most days, the effects team really nailed it. Dinosaurs, saucers, hey, you name it. But these, um, deflating rock boulder cubes ah, not their best work it just looks kind of odd if you ask me like giant whoopee cushions and they said they could add some debris and explosions or two afterwards and then we ran out of budget well to be fair we ran out of budget several times but still i lost a lot of sleep over these rocks
any backstory on Dick? Why'd he travel to Gravoria in the first place? Did he do any research before landing there? Did he have a specific mission in that region of space? Patrick, Patrick, if you keep getting bogged down by the details, how will you ever learn to just sit back and appreciate the work of art for what it is? Tip, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how sunny it is, don't store your paper mache props outdoors. They will get rained on. It's the law in this town, like Occam's Razor or Stockholm Syndrome, or I forget what it's called. What in the cosmos? It's my co-pilot's body! I... I believe that I can repair it. Oh no! I am trapped! Master Dick. Master Dick! Functions restored. Threat detected. Must eliminate. Fun fact! Hey, we actually had an actor inside the robot suit moving him around. I bet you thought it was an actual robot, huh? That's how good he was. No rest breaks or anything. Hardest working actor I've ever met. What a trooper. It was a shame we couldn't afford to pay him. And of course, since he wasn't on the payroll, I couldn't officially add him to the credits. But still, what a trooper. Wish I had a dozen actors like him. Dangerous radiation detected. No, no, we didn't use the same material for the toxic waste as we did the slimes. I mean, why fake something when you have the real deal available? We found a place where people were just dumping the stuff away for free. I was hoping the crew members handling it might get some cool superpowers from it, but no, nothing like that.
will strike down upon you with great vengeance and furious anger. Oh, Robot, you're all right! And you saved the day. You're, you're threat eliminated. Looks like the Emperor's days are numbered. At long last, we have assembled our team. A lot of reviewers and fans, too, always wondered why we shot so few scenes with all three heroes in it together. I mean, we did our best to explain it, Something about the sleep chambers or staying back to protect the ape village. Really, it was just logistics. Jonathan had bowling league on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, and Stacy had her karate Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Honestly, we almost never had all of them on the set at the same time. <laughs> Our robot actor was in some religion that only allowed him to work on Sundays. I'm still a little skeptical about that one, though. Sir, it's just a guy in a suit. Couldn't you have gotten just about anyone to stand in as the robot? See? That's why you'd make a horrible director, Patrick. His touches were subtle, to say the least. But he really brought a lot of character to the robot role. If he was so indispensable, how come he didn't list the actor in the credits? Well, let's... Just say it was an oversight, but I've learned my lesson. I only made the mistake six more times throughout my career. created these conveyor belts for Stacy's character. Jonathan was always trying to run across them to no avail. I probably should have told him that we slowed the belt down whenever Scarlet runs across, but he, I got a real kick out of watching him try. We first tried this one with regular logs. Well, that was disastrous. I'll tell you, never mess with physics. It was kind of, well, to be frank, it started out nice, but then, uh, well, it was a death trap. Just plain and simple, it was a death trap. Poor kid holding the boom almost broke his leg. Guess he played basketball in college or something, because he leaped right at the last second. Whoo! Crisis averted. My props guy wanted to swap them with some spongy material for safety, but I had a better idea. Let's set the logs on fire. Then the crew will be sure to be safe dealing with them. You know what I was
was thinking? With all this jumping and climbing and jumping, wouldn't this make a great video game? Isn't that what all those video games are about? Jumping around? Well, yeah, and killing. There's jumping too, but mostly the killing. What? Patrick, that's awful. What sort of example are we setting for our use? Well, movies are pretty violent, too. Your heroes have killed everything in sight. You had Dick shooting a dinosaur in the face in the first five minutes. Oh, uh, well, Patrick, that's different, you know? What we did on film, that was art. Video games aren't art. <laughs> Funny story about the two caged apes in this scene. I had completely forgotten about them when we wrapped up filming on the set. Then we spent the next day doing a location shoot. So suffice it to say, our return to the studio was met with a couple of grumbling tummies complaining about unsafe work conditions, human rights, yada, yada, yada. Hey, Patrick, I was thinking we should take a little break and get a bite to eat. You like Chinese? I know a great takeout. Well, we're not scheduled for a break for another few hours. Nonsense. Hey, you have to try the shrimp. It's the absolute best. But, oh, hey, uh, I feel like I should warn you. It gives me horrible gas. <laughs> but that's okay. We're friends, right? Uh, really, sir, studio time costs a fortune. Let's just stay on schedule. Good thinking. We could grab a real dinner together and go out for a night on the town. Yeah. <laughs> Two young bachelors on the prowl. Say, where do you youngsters go these days? in Hollywood or even made the budget back for that matter but hey in the end I think it was still worth making just for those die-hard fans that really love it I attended a lot of sci-fi and movie cons and to this day I still see fans showing up dressed as aliens and apes and dinosaurs <laughs> does a man proud now Granted, their costumes aren't exactly 100% faithful to the film, and it seems that no one ever remembers them by the right name. But still, knowing that we still have fans like this promoting the film decades later, it puts a tear in this old director's eye. <laughs> I get all emotional. Okay. Ah, Tony and his insistence on lens flare. I tell you, some days it felt like he was trying to be the director. Honestly, you could see dust on the lens, so. I'd just go and wipe it off myself. He would get so upset about it, too. Like my fingers aren't clean enough to wipe the lens. Oh, it cuts the lens. Oh, whatever. 